Hey, my name's Tim Buell, and today we're gonna talk about how to get faster hand speed around the drum kit so you can do stuff like this. Like I said, my name's Tim Buell. I'm a drummer living here in Nashville, Tennessee, and I record drums. I tour with artists from Nashville and I educate musicians online. Now, before I hear it about it in the comments, I know that having fast hands around the drums is not the point of music. In my professional career, playing on people's records, touring with artists and playing shows, I, I don't really often get asked to play like super fast stuff around the drums. I get it. But having the ability to play fast stuff consistently and powerfully around the drum kit increases our total headroom and that makes everything that we play underneath that breaking point easier because we're playing above what the gig calls for. Now, this lesson is only gonna talk about exercises for single stroke rolls because in my opinion, if you can get around the drum set with singles, they are more difficult to get around with than doubles. So if you can do it with singles, you'll be able to do it with doubles. Singles are less rebound dependent, so usually they provide you a more consistent sound on any drum kit, regardless of how it's tuned. Exercise number one is one I like to call the one, two, three exercise, and you can get the sheet music for free in a PDF in the description of this video. So if you want to get these exercises, print them out, put them in your practice room and work on them yourself, you can download that PDF for free in the description below. So exercise one, the one, two, three exercise, it's really, really easy. Uh, basically, we're gonna label each drum a number. So snare drum is gonna be one, rack tom is gonna be two, and floor tom is gonna be three. And basically, all we're doing is playing four sixteenth notes on each drum, and we're gonna mix up the order. Now, since we have three drums here, I'm gonna play these measures in three, four time. Don't let that freak you out, but basically we're just gonna play every variation of how we get around the drums. There are six variations, and we're just gonna play all the variations twice. Um, so again, link in the description for the PDF. So really slowly, the exercise sounds like this, and you'll see that I'm keeping quarter notes with my kick drum and my hi-hat together. Uh, you don't have to do this when you're first starting out. I recommend just starting out with only the hands, but for right now, just know that so you can hear where the quarter note is, I'm gonna keep quarter notes on kick drum and hi-hat. The beauty of this exercise is it gets you moving around the drum kit in ways that you wouldn't normally do it. I think a lot of us are resistant to go over to the floor tom because this motion is uncomfortable. And a lot of us don't go from floor tom to rack tom because getting the right hand from all the way over on the floor tom all the way up to the rack tom, that's a lot, it's a lot of work. And now here and there, I had a couple stick clicks. I had a couple of spots where, you know, it kind of took one time to get sunk into it and make it feel good. What you really wanna watch out for is flamming between any of the drums um, and the kick drum and the hi-hat. You want everything playing in unison and you really just wanna make sure you minimize stick clicks and as you're moving around to the drums, you're trying to play in the center of the drum. Don't play toward the edge of the drum. So here's the exercise a little faster. Okay, a quick cocktail break, and in the time it takes me to make this drink, a Sazerac, I'm gonna tell you about the sponsor of today's video, DistroKid. Now, why should you care about DistroKid? It's because I'm assuming you're a musician if you're watching this, and if you are a musician, you might need to upload your music to Spotify, Apple Music, and other streaming services. And to do that, you need a digital distribution platform. 
That's where DistroKid comes in. DistroKid lets you upload as many songs as you want for the same monthly rate, unlike other platforms that charge you per project you upload. They also have a ton of free tools that make uploading and getting your music out into the world so much easier. They have a tool called Splits, which lets you easily pay percentages to whoever worked on the songs and get them paid, and DistroKid automatically pays them out and you don't have to worry about it. Hyperfollow gives you a super easy way to promote your songs without having to build a website or track a bunch of links yourself. Two other great tools they have are a tool called Instant Share, which lets you share big files between collaborators, and Mixia, which is a service with a super easy to understand interface that helps you get your songs mastered by AI if you are tight on a budget but still want to get your song mastered so it can be competitive and translate once it's out in the world. You can sign up for DistroKid using the link in the description, and when you do, you save 30% off of your first year with DistroKid. All right, now I'm going to enjoy this drink and we can get back to the lesson. Exercise two has two examples of what I call flowing stickings. So in that first exercise we did, those stickings around the drums are a little awkward. When you go from playing your right hand on the floor tom, right, left, right, all the way up to the rack tom, right, left, right, it's hard to get those stickings to go like that. And flowing stickings around the drum kit are stickings that you can more naturally use singles to get around the drums where you know they kind of work in your favor a little bit as to where they all land and how easily it will flow. For example, this first one, it's gonna be sextuplets, and it's kind of two groups of sextuplets played over and over again. And it's, it's a fill, but you can use it as an exercise to build speed around the drum kit. And basically, the, the first beat of this exercise is just kick and crash cymbal, or kick and ride cymbal on beat one, and then left, right, left, right, left on snare drum as a sextuplet. Nothing too crazy there, but the second beat of this exercise is really what makes it kind of a around the drum kit speed builder. And basically what it is, is it's right, left, right. So just like the first beat, but then you're playing left, right, left, rack, floor, floor, around the drum kit. And as you speed this up, it looks really crazy and you're going all around the drum kit. And as a fill, when you play it fast, it sounds really fancy as a you know exercise as you're playing it slow and working up the speed and i do recommend all these exercises you start super super slow and you slowly build speed you know so start at 50 bpm play these exercises so they're super clean super crisp and then notch the metronome up 1 bpm play it at 51 notch it up play it at 52 but no matter what tempo you're playing at make sure that you're crystal clean that you're playing in the center of the drums as you move around, that all the notes are kind of equal power. This exercise too. First beat. And then the second beat. And you just kind of loop those two beats over and over. And as you speed this up, it sounds really, really crazy. And you're getting around the drum kit and it's getting you comfortable with moving around. But the sticking, Although you are moving around the drum kit, the sticking just flows really nicely and it's really easy. And unlike the first exercise, you're not having to like go from all the way over here, all the way over here. Um, so it speeds up very easily because the sticking flows well. So here it is slowly. Now, a little bit faster. And that's a nice one to throw in, you know, maybe the outro of a song. You can actually play this on a gig if you do it tastefully. Now the second flowing sticking that I wanna talk about is again, one that seems kinda of crazy, but because the sticking flows well and how it's split up, it kinda of speeds up easier than it seems. And it's also gonna get us working around the drum kit and working on our hand speed all over the drum kit. So in this first group of sextuplets, we have kinda of two stickings the way I think about it. So it goes right, left, right, floor, snare, snare, and then rack, floor, floor. 
And again, even though that sticking is all over the drum kit, uh, it's kind of, it's laid out in a way that kind of flows really nicely. Playing all over the drum kit, but you're not really having to do too big of movements, so it speeds up quickly. And then the second beat of this is where it gets a little crazy because you've just been over on the floor, Tom, in the first beat of this uh, exercise, and now you're gonna go right hand over to the snare drum which is kind of crazy, but because your left hand is kind of sticking over here, they're not having to travel like this. It's just this, which is a much easier motion because you're able to move just your hand instead of having to move your torso like we did in exercise one. So it's right, left, right, and then rack, snare, snare. So the whole thing together very slowly, And again, because it's the internet, let's go a little faster. Exercise number three is my favorite exercise for speed around the drum kit, for working on different stickings, and also working on your drum set independence, so feet and hands at the same time. And this is gonna be a quick overview and just kind of a very surface level. I have a full course on you know how to use this system that I call the subdivision pyramid uh, and how to use it to improve your independence, your speed and all that stuff. You can check that out. There's a link in the description to get that course. It's one of the less expensive courses on my website. And again, it's several video lessons and a PDF ebook and it teaches you how to use this system in order to improve like kind of everything about your drumming, but especially your independence and your speed. So the first step of this exercise is to get the concept of the subdivision pyramid. And basically the subdivision pyramid, it's not rocket science. Uh, you play a measure of eighth notes, a measure of eighth note triplets, a measure of 16th notes, a measure of 16th note triplets, a measure of 32nd notes, and then you go back down. That's why it's called the pyramid. Uh, there have been several people over the years that have taught things like this. This is my version of it. So the subdivision pyramid with no foot pattern or anything played as singles on the snare drum sounds like this. That's the basis of the subdivision pyramid. And that alone is gonna work up your hand speed because it's not only working on, you know, playing 30 second notes, but it's working on switching between subdivisions, which is asking something of your hands because at every subdivision, your hand technique requires something a little different. And that's the first step is just getting that down, playing that confidently at a slow tempo. And then again, bumping up the tempo. The next thing you can do after that is add the feet because I would play all these rudiments and hand exercises in college when I was studying music at university. And what I realized is while I'm practicing hand technique stuff, I really am using my feet, which means I'm only really using half of my body and I need my whole body when I play drums. So the next step is add a foot pattern while you're playing this. Now you can use a foot pattern like just quarter notes on kick drum and then, you know, hi-hat on two and four. The sky is the limit, and again, in the course that's on my website, I go through all kinds of foot patterns. But the one I'm gonna use here is kind of this Latin-flavored foot pattern. Um, it sounds like this. So, whatever foot pattern you're choosing, again, if you've never done this before, and you're either a beginner or an intermediate, and you haven't worked on exercises like this, probably don't start with this foot pattern. Start with something easier. But, to demonstrate, I'm gonna use this foot pattern and play the subdivision pyramid on the snare drum. Hopefully it sounds exactly like it did, now I just have a foot pattern with it.
Now, the fun part is moving around the drum kit. Now, I suggest at first you pick exactly what pattern you're gonna go around the drum kit. You can do this a lot of ways, you can randomize it, whatever, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go snare, rack, floor, rack for each measure. So the first measure will be two eighth notes on the snare, two eighth notes on the rack, two eighth notes on the floor, two eighth notes on the rack, and then the next measure. Three triplets on the snare, three triplets on the rack, three triplets on the floor, three triplets on the rack, and so on. So, it'll sound something like this. And there you have it. Those are your three exercises to build hand speed and your comfort around the drum kit. You can download the sheet music for free and the link in the description. Thanks again to DistroKid for sponsoring this video and I'll see you in the next one.